Welcome to the section on perfusion. Perfusion is the heart-lung machine, basically. And what we're going to do is take the bad blood out and put the good blood back in. We start when the surgeon puts the cannula into the right side of the heart to drain the, the dark blood, deoxygenated blood, out of the body, which comes through this tubing, from here, to this, into this reservoir, into this reservoir that will flow into the, the blood pump and into the artificial lung. So this reservoir here is uh, where the fluid comes. We have a small amount of suction on it to help drain better through the smaller tubes. Uh, but the blood comes here and what we have here is what we have to work with. If we have a low amount of volume like as you see here, uh, we will have to probably add fluid to change things. But generally the blood will come somewhere around a liter of excess blood will come out of the patient and we'll have that to work with. From here, it goes through a one-way valve to make sure it doesn't flow in the wrong direction into the blood pump. This is a constrained vortex pump, and right now it's, it's spinning at 1,100 RPMs and generating three liters of flow. From there, it goes through a sensor that tells us how many liters it is and into the oxygenator. The oxygenator is the large canister thing there and it's got a bunch of tiny little tubes going one direction through which the gas will flow and the blood will flow around the outside. So as the blood flows into that, it goes around the outside of the little tubes. The little tubes will carry a mixture of oxygen and medical grade air and then the blood will decarboxygenate and oxygenate and from there it will come out this side and go back to the patient uh, where it will go into a tube into the aorta. That takes the bad blood out through our system and then back into the patient. Now, as you can see here, there's a number of other tubes, and this here is the cardioplegia system. From the Latin cardio, heart, plegia to paralyze, this is how we're going to stop the heart. Because one can imagine it's easier to sew on something that's quiet and not moving than something that's trying to beat at 60 beats per minute. What we take is cardioplegic solution, and this basically puts a high amount of potassium into just the heart. The surgeon will use a cross clamp to separate the heart from the rest of circulation, and then this solution, which will be very, very cold and have an extreme amount of potassium, will stop the heart, much as uh, the chemically, uh, much as how they put the criminals down <laughs> with too much potassium. So perfusionist job is to stop the heart so the surgeon can work on it. And since it's separated from the rest of the body, we can do that with a lot less potassium. People forget that the heart is an electrical device and with enough potassium, the heart will depolarize and fail to beat. This lets the surgeon work on it at their own pace and keeps the heart safe and quiet. As this will only last for a certain amount of time, we'll give subsequent doses that will again clear out all the bad metabolites and re reinfuse a new uh, volume of oxygenated uh, blood with cardioplegia. The first dose has a high K to stop the heart and subsequent doses will have about one fourth the amount of potassium to keep the heart quiet and comfortable. The other tubes on the heart lung machine are all basic just ways to suck and collect blood from the field. The normal pump sucker is the large one. It collects any blood that's in the well of the heart. The second one is generally the root vent, and this keeps the heart empty from the inside. A little tube will be stuck in the aorta below the clamp that will keep the heart empty of uh, volume that somehow goes through the lungs and still comes back to the left ventricle. The vent will, will keep that, the heart from getting too full, and basically it's so that while the cross clamp is on, the heart can beat, but there's no volume to make it hurt itself trying to pump versus a clamped aorta. The third one is just one that's used uh, rarely, but if there's excess blood, it can be used in the field also. And all this drains back into the reservoir, which is, you know, where all the blood, our blood source comes from. So, yeah, these, these three tubes here are where blood comes back. This one here is where we add volume if we need to 
if again, as the level in the reservoir is too low, we will add to bring it up. We'll add, we'll add uh, ringers or normosol or, or saline. And if the crit is too low, we will add blood and blood products and albumin and other things to try and get the solution in the system as close to blood as we possibly can. What is this for? This here is a reserve. Uh, this here is. It, this is uh, where we draw blood off of and add drugs into. It's the manifold, and it's basically an arterial line that, that empties back into the venous line, back into the reservoir. So when we give drugs, they go in, they mix with all of the blood in the, all of the volume in the reservoir, and then are put back into circulation. Do you have filters in the reservoir? The the reservoir has a has a gross filter inside, so even though this plastic does not peel off much, if, if for some reason tiny pieces of plastic or dust or anything that's in there, and most of those would be sterilized in the sterilization process, but if any of those tiny particles come back, they will be trapped by the gross filter inside and again also by the finer filter on the outside. Do you have an arterial filter? We do not have an arterial filter anymore. It used to be a staple, but the process of keeping the blood filtered and clear of tiny particles is so good now that arterial filters are not used everywhere. Okay. The oxygenator itself will really stop the majority of, of bad things, of which there's not a lot. Where are these cables? These cables, this is the venous temperature sensor and there's an arterial temperature sensor down on the oxygenator. And those tell us the, the, the temperature of the blood coming out from the patient. The one. And the red one is the arterial of the blood going back into the patient. Okay. What is this green tubing? The green tubing here is the oxygen line. And we could use 100% oxygen, but we find that it's better on the lungs and the brain and the chemical, the, the blood, uh, blood gas uh, properties to, to use a mixture. So we generally will start with maybe 80% oxygen, 20% medical grade air, and as the patients cool down, we will take that percentage down. Okay, and where is these other devices that you have? Okay. This device here is in line. It is a blood gas monitor. It monitors in line what the hematocrit, um, actually this one measures the blood gas components. It also measures calcium, and a few other electrolytes. The one here on the top is a venous sat, and that tells us the venous saturation of blood and the hematocrit. And you have that screen? This screen is the computer sensor that basically tells us what's going on. Right now, it is showing the pump is flowing at 2.8 liters per minute, um, and it's saying we could calibrate. This is our gas flow and the percent of oxygen. And all those will come up uh, by touch. We can adjust the amount of gas. Uh, it, of course, has a pump timer and a cross clamp timer. So we can tell the surgeon how long it's been that we've been on the machine or how long the order has been clamped. Uh, the different, where it says calibration, is going to tell us the different pressures that the lines all feel. If, if the aortic cannula is in and we clamp uh, on the, the pump side of the tubing, the, the pressure here will be base or pressure here will be basically the pressure of the aorta. Now, when we start flowing, it's going to create a resistance because as the blood goes through a 3 8 inch tube down to the cannula that's 21 French uh, in diameter, we create resistance, and it's pumping through that uh, cannula into the aorta that is going to generate the, the patient's uh, blood flow. How do you keep the patients to see? Uh, we mix a portion of anesthetic gas with that oxygen that we give, and anesthesia uh, is what administers the drugs that put the patient to sleep and paralyzed. Now, could you do it without a gas? Anesthesia have to administer something intravenous? Yes. If, if we didn't use an anesthetic gas on the heart lung machine, anesthesia could do it, but it would not be through uh, vapor gases because the lungs are stopped. So when the, lung, when the lungs are stopped for surgery, the heart-lung machine is the lungs, and we put the vaporizer gas through the oxygenator, the same as uh, along with the oxygen and 
and gas mix. Okay. This other machine is your. This is uh, yeah. This is this is what gives us the readouts from the sensors, the arterial sensor and the venous sensor. Mm -hmm. So it'll give us the blood gases, the electrolytes, and the saturations. Good. And these other. These are, these other transducers are just ways to measure the tubing at different points. As you can see, the three cows on here. There's one that's going to measure. Uh, how much vacuum source we use to create uh, the gentle suction that allows uh, five liters to come through a, a 29 uh, French cannula uh, easier. So it's easier on the blood. It used to just be by gravity that uh, the blood was drained out into the pump and the table was higher than the, the heart lung machine was. Uh, but now we have a gentle, a gentle amount of suction that is put on the fluid itself, which makes it flow out easier. So more blood flows through a smaller canyon. Uh, the others are just uh, the measure of cardioplegia. We can see when we deliver cardioplegia uh, to the heart or just down one vessel, what, what the resistance is on that and what the flow is. And generally at a flow of 150, that's good? Okay. Uh, we can we can measure the flow of car, uh, of blood down to each vessel, and at a resistance of 150, we can tell the surgeon how much blood is flowing through a single artery or a piece of vein. So, final thoughts. Final thoughts. As with everything in cardiac, it's all about the tubes. We our tubes go into the heart uh, and, and brings the blood to the machine and back. Anesthesia tubes go into the throat where they're left, and then it's just arteries and veins. <laughs>